been quiet for way too long. I can't fight it. No, no more. Got a story. It's time to tell. And I just can't, just can't keep it to myself. Somebody give me a microphone or a megaphone or a telephone. You're gonna clap your hands, go on and dance. Good news, got that old made new, got that joy coming. today, whatever burden that is on our heart, God, we pray that you lift it. We pray that you show your strength, God, and show your power, because you are so much greater than all that we face. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We invite you to please stand and sing this first song with us, There is Power. So 
that church. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus.
Thank you. And if you would be seated, I want to say a word as we uh, move into communication or uh, communion, uh, communication. Uh, scripture is full of these wonderful images that tell us how Jesus regards us. If we think about all of the times when we think about communion, we think about, well, one final supper, but th that's not the only time Jesus sat with people. Anytime Jesus was with people, they would bring their problems and he would remind them who they are. They would bring their concerns and he would remind them who they are in, in, in his eyes, in God's eyes. People would bring their anger and he would remind them whose they are. Uh, that, that's what happened. And, and in the upper room, Jesus looks at his disciples and says, you are my friends. So we have wonderful imagery. Uh, father, mother, creator. Not out there, but that intimate closeness where we can say things to each other from the heart level. Uh, uh, it's a moment of, of intimacy. It's, it's what communion is it's an invitation to you uh, people who thought they weren't welcome at the table had been told by the culture around them well you're not welcome at the table jesus made it a point to include them at the table and then told them who they were and you might say well who am i in god's eyes you are the creation of god you are god's child and so we come to the table, and Jesus said, this is how much I mean it. I'm willing for my body to be broken for you. And he said, I'm willing for my blood to be poured out for you. Drink this and remember me. Eat this and remember me. This is how Jesus becomes part of us. Jesus is part of our body. Jesus blood coursing through our veins. This is just grape juice. But it means something different to us. It, it means that Jesus is in us and working through us. And sometimes when we forget who we are, we need to be reminded. We come to the table and Jesus reminds us, you're my brother, you're my sister. We are connected to one another. I want to invite those who will be helping with communion to come forward, and um, uh, we're going to hold bread and cup, yes? Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your faith. Wanderer, come home, you're not too far. Lay down your hurt, lay down your soul, come as you are. The 
There's hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste of the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fallen is ours, come as you are, there's joy for the morning, oh sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burden. Lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are. All right, kids, you know what time it is. Come on to the front, let's sing the song. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed. Got this heart beating my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed. Got this heart beating my chest. No, it doesn't matter. church. What did we have at church this week? What was here? Vacation Bible. Say it nice. Also, they had ice cream truck. Yes, we had an ice cream truck today, but we had Vacation Bible Camp all week, right? And did you guys have fun? What was our theme for Vacation Bible Camp? Do you remember? Super, you had to be a hero, right? Maya remembered to wear her mask and cape. And so, do you guys remember our Bible verse that we did? So let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. You got it. So we focus on those things that help us to build God's kingdom by working together and showing grace, right? And then we also had a lot of help to do this. So if you were one of our awesome volunteers all week, it took, we had 125 kids, so it took 49 youth and teen volunteers to pull this off. So if you were one of our volunteers, please stand up so we can give you some applause. <laughs> 
Yes, it was awesome. There are people here who didn't, who were here, but just didn't want to be recognized. So, but we know you were here. So, the kids that were here, they wanted to share one of the songs with you. So, the song is the Hero Hotline song. If we can roll that, and then they have. Oh, okay. We're gonna do it though. You got it. All right, we're gonna do our Hero Hotline song. So let's stand up and show it to them. Okay, ready? announcements this morning. Um, Ignite believes in building community amongst its people, and here's a few uh, ways that we can do that. Um, if you've been thinking about taking the next steps and joining Ignite and the church, um, we're having another receiving of new members next month on August 12th. Um, speak with one of the pastors or Andrea after the service if you're interested in joining the church. And today apparently is National Ice Cream Day, and maybe you saw the ice cream truck out there. It will be open and serving after the service as well, so make sure you head out there and get a great ice cream treat today. Um, it's the perfect hot day for that. Um, and at this time also, please take a moment to consider how you'd like to support the ministries of the church. If you're a first-time visitor, we don't expect you to give. Your gift or your presence here is your gift. However, if you've been coming to Ignite for a while or if PVUMC is your church home, you can give online at pvumc.org or in the baskets um, on the welcome tables over there. And now would you just take a minute to um, greet a neighbor or say hello to someone that you don't know?
our God is an awesome God, yeah. or uh, this little light of mine. Yeah. The rap verse was good. The rap one was great. <laughs> yeah. We should have played it. We should, and I think we should rap it. This little light of mine. Just Ryan like did that. Yeah, yeah. all three of us. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Every time I tried to make it on my own Every time I tried to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on well, There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now well, There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurt like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus For this man who means amazing kind of grace Forgiveness at a price I could not pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. But there was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting. Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. On the mountains, in the valley, there was Jesus. In the shadows of the alley, there was Jesus. In the fire and in the flood, there was Jesus. Always is and always was. No, he never walk alone. scripture reading this morning is from Mark uh, chapter 5 verses 1 through 20. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the lake to the region of the Jeremiah. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out of the tombs. This man lived among the tombs and no one was ever strong enough to restrain him, even with a chain. He had been secured many times with leg irons and chains, but he broke the chains and smashed the leg irons. No one was tough enough to control him. Night and day in the tombs in the hills, he would howl and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from far away, he ran and knelt before him, shouting, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded him, Unclean spirit, come out of this man. Jesus asked him, 
What is your name? He responded, Legion is my name because we are many. They pleaded with Jesus not to send them out of that region. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside. Send us into the pigs, they begged. Let us go into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission, so the unclean spirits left the man and went into the pigs. Then the herd of about 2,000 pigs rushed down the cliff into the lake and drowned. Those who tended the pigs ran away and told the story in the city and in the countryside. People came to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the man who used to be demon-possessed. They saw the very man who had been filled with many demons sitting there fully dressed and completely sane, and they were filled with awe. Those who had actually seen what had happened to the demon-possessed man told the others about the pigs. Then they pleaded with Jesus to leave their region. While he was climbing into the boat, the one who had been demon-possessed pleaded with Jesus to let him come along as one of his disciples. But Jesus wouldn't allow it. Go home to your own people, Jesus said, and tell them what the Lord has done for you and how he has shown you mercy. The man went away and began to proclaim in the ten cities all that Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. Thank you. Hey, good morning, all. My name is Lauren. I'm one of the pastors here, and today we are starting a new sermon series called Unrestricted. So for the next three weeks, we are going to talk about how Jesus does not hold back in loving people and restoring people. And so we're going to hear three stories of unlikely candidates to get restored. And Jesus does everything in his power to bring them back to who they are meant to be. Our first story is about this man who is living in such a state of chaos. And this story, and Mark does this a lot in the book of Mark, there is a lot of chaos. And then Jesus meets that chaos and brings peace. And it happens time and time and time again in Mark. And what Mark is doing, I think, or I should say the author of Mark is doing, is showing the difference of what Jesus brings into the world and how messy and sticky and chaotic our world really is. Time and time again, this author reminds us that Jesus has come to restore us to who God has meant to, us to be. And so for this man, it's in this story, it's layer upon layer upon layer of chaos for his existence. We learn quickly that he's unclean. And there's two definitions here in unclean. First is, we know he's a Gentile. So he's not a Jew, just based on the location of the story. So for the readers, the original readers of the book of Mark, the author is making a point here to say, see, he's not one of you. He is essentially unclean, quote, unquote, unclean. A second layer of that identity is he's living in tombs outside of the city. So quite literally, he is living among the dead. He has no identity anymore. Nobody talks to him. Everybody avoids him. It's like he doesn't exist. He is essentially dead. There is no life in him, at least not his life. In the scripture we read today, or that Lisa read today, sorry, Lisa, there you are. <laughs> the scripture that Lisa read today, it talks about how this man broke and shattered his chains to give this impression of how strong he is. But when we look at the original text, the words aren't, they're, they're a little bit more dramatic, actually. So I know a lot of us watch crime shows, right? And the good guy always breaks out of his handcuffs, right? He's somehow so strong, he can just break out of anything that holds him down. It's not that. It's more like the Hulk or anything that really brings destruction, like Tasmanian Devil, assume that, right? He is so strong that he wrenches his shackles. He smashes them to smithereens, is really what the Greek is defined as. And so it just, that chaotic sense just keeps building. 
this guy is hulking out and no one will go and talk to him. He's very Hulk smash. Right? And this turmoil is identified really quickly. Jesus sees the man, the man sees Jesus. And the man kneels in front of him. Interestingly enough, commentators say it's more about a kneel of recognition of who Jesus is and the power that Jesus holds. Not so much praise, but identity of who Jesus is. And Jesus sees these layers of chaos, these layers of pain. And he's met with, he says, what is your name? Says, we are legion because we are many. If you don't know, legion is a term that defines Roman soldiers, a really big group of Roman soldiers, about 6,000 or more. So this man is plagued with 6,000 or more voices, with other identities upon him. And, then, and when we say demon possession, it doesn't necessarily mean actual demons from hell, but it's more different voices, different identities. This man is plagued with more than 6,000. That is incredibly burdensome. Think about the turmoil that this man lives in. No wonder he's lost his identity. And Jesus gets to work. In the storytelling of the Gospel of Mark, the author loves to layer stories on top of each other. And in Mark 4, right before this scripture, Jesus calms an actual storm. So they're crossing, Jesus and the disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee, and a storm comes upon them. It's described as a raging storm with waves crashing into the boat, and the disciples fear for their lives. Where's Jesus? He's sleeping in the back of the boat, on a pillow, apparently. And the disciples scream out to him. They say, don't you care about us? We're about to drown. Hello, wake up. Aren't you the one who can do all of this? Where do, you're sleeping on the job, man. Let's go. Jesus quickly calms the storm. And we see in this story that how we went from chaos to peace instantly. All because Jesus said so. So then we keep going into Mark 5. And we're met with a man who is living in a storm within himself. He has 6,000 or more voices running through his head. He is quite literally in a storm. And Jesus restores him to peace. And it's all that Jesus had to do here is he reduced the voices to just one to just the voice of Jesus. He was restored to his natural God-given identity because Jesus spoke. So then these voices or demons or whatever we want to call it, they go to a herd of pigs 2,000, it says, and I think that's important in this story. Immediately, the pigs rush to the edge of the cliff and jump into the water and drown themselves. 2,000 pigs could not contain the 6,000 plus voices that this man lived with for we don't know how long. That's how torturous it is. That the pigs would choose death immediately and not an easy death either, then live with these voices. And so what happens next? You'd think the people would be, oh, that's great. This guy has been suffering for so long. But they find out what happened. They run over 
They see the man in peace. They see him. It says that they see him sitting still. He's not howling anymore. That's a descriptive word. He's not cutting himself anymore. He is simply sitting in the presence of Jesus at peace. And instead of celebrating this, the townsfolk grow angry. They lost all of their pigs, all of their money. I get it. You'd be shocked if you lost your livelihood too. That's fair. However, I would hope that they would switch gears here and see that the life was more important. It doesn't seem to be that way for these folks. Nope, their anger seems to show that they care more about their monetary gain than the man's life. And so the people plead with Jesus. It says plead, like beg him, please go, please leave before you destroy any more of our property. You're just a little troublesome here. Please get out of our way. You are not welcome here anymore, Jesus. And then, but on the opposite side, here we see the man's reaction as well. The man is now at peace and he says, I want to come with you, Jesus. And he uses the same word, it says, plead. The same plea that the townsfolk gave Jesus. It's the same word for the man. So it's this gut, in the gut, have to go plead. Can I please come with you? I think he wanted to continue to hear that voice of Jesus. He wanted to be in the presence of the voice that restored him. Instead of this, instead of saying, sure, come aboard, Jesus turns him down and says, no, you go. Go to your people. To your friends is the actual word. Go to those that know you and explain to them what the Lord has done for you and demonstrate the mercy he has shown you. And so he goes and he tells his story in 10 cities. It's a group of Gentile cities, a group of 10 cities, and he goes there and he tells his story and it says that the people were marveled at what Jesus had done for this man. So this is a great story. It's a great story about how Jesus is unrestricted in his care for humanity about how nothing stops him to bring restoration to the people. It's also a reminder to us to live in an unrestricted way, to, to unrestrict the love that we have for others. It gives us an opportunity to recognize what Jesus has done in our lives, to recognize how Jesus has restored us, and how we can share that story with the world, with the people that know us. It pushes us to share God's mercy and to demonstrate it. But we are a people and we have choices. We could be like the townspeople. We could lament and avoid the people that give us headaches that take up space, that are too strong to do anything with, that we don't know how to handle. We could ignore them. We can ignore their pain. We could also do that to ourselves. How many of us know how to compartmentalize real well? Yeah, I see a few hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to confront our pain. We want to avoid the pain that we go through as well. So we're real good at just pushing that to the side. Say, mm, that's a bit prickly for today. No, thank you. And we get really good at avoiding our own pain. We could be like the people and we could choose not to see the miracles right in front of us. We could choose to ignore how Jesus restores and brings peace in a chaotic world. 
We can choose to just not see God at work. We can choose our own monetary gain over helping another. We could choose our own convenience over helping another. It's, we'd all do it. It's okay. It's fine. We do it. It's okay to say that. Because it's easy to fall into that pattern. We could also be like the townspeople where we are afraid to see what Jesus could do. And so again, we just ignore it. We don't go near it. We could choose to listen to our voices of greed and superiority. We could choose that. Or we could be like the man who was restored. We could go to Jesus with open arms. We could allow Jesus to work within us and to restore us to who God has meant us to be to come back to our God-given identity. We can share the mercy and the restoration that God has already shown us. We could share that with our family and friends. We could go into the cities and speak our truth of what God has done in our lives. We could truly choose to do that. But it means that we have to abandon all other voices and make space for only one voice, for the voice of Christ. Sometimes we really need this voice to remind us who we are. Sometimes we forget that we are actually marked by Jesus. Jesus has marked every one of you as worthy, as worthy of having life, of being restored into who God has made you to be. My, I don't know if you can still see it, it's rubbed off a little bit, but my um, little girl drew a flower on my hand last night with a washable marker. Right? I have washed my hand several times and it, it hasn't come off. And as I was washing my hand for, I don't know, the sixth time, I was like, huh, that's just not coming off. That mark is on there. It actually made me think about how, again, Jesus marks every single one of us. We are marked with the love of Christ. We are marked through the restoration that Christ brings us. And so we get to choose, how are we going to share that mark? We get to choose if we show that mark to the world. Let us be people who go out into the world, who share our mark of mercy who share our mark of peace. Go out into the week knowing that you are marked and you are loved and there is a whole world that needs to hear that. Go in peace. Amen.